Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com. I am standing here in my sewing room slash shop area where I've told you about before, but I sew and sell grain sack fabric, grain sack pillows, stockings, things like that. I have a tutorial on my blog on how to make one of my products, which is the grain sack and ticking stripe pillows. So they are very popular with the farmhouse style of decorating and they are super simple to make. So I am gonna show you how I make them from start to finish so that if you are a person who knows how to sew or you're looking to learn to sew, you can learn how to sew these. Like I said, they're also available for purchase in my shop. I'll link all that below and the link to the blog post. Let's dive in and show you how to make them. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I make two videos every week on food from scratch, our handmade home, and our simple lifestyle here on Boone Street. Also, visit the playlist below that has all of my sewing tutorials. So first, I start with this grain sack reproduction fabric. So this isn't authentic grain sack. It is just a reproduction. Now, you can find vintage feed sacks at antique shops or thrift shops that you could also work with. If you want to use this, I do have an online fabric shop and I'll link that below. And then for the inside, I use just a ticking, which I'll also link where you can get this. So for the cut list, we're going to cut two pieces of 19 inch by 19 inch of the grain sack, one piece of 19 inch by 19 inch of the ticking, two pieces of 13 inch by 19 inch of the ticking, and two 18 inch pieces of extra wide double fold bias tape in the color Oyster by Wrights is what I use for all of my pillows in my shop. You could make your own ties and you could make them out of bias tape or drop cloth and that is totally fine and I've done that. But this way is just so simple and fast. So if you get a pack of these, you can use these as your ties. So let's start by cutting everything out. Now keep in mind that when you're cutting this out, you do want these stripes to be centered on the pillow. For the 18 by 18 that we're making, that we're cutting 19 wide, we are going to go three and a half inches on either side of the stripe. Now that is just because the stripes are 12 inches and so that I've taken 19 minus 12, which is seven, and then divide that by two to get three and a half. So you can follow that same formula for any size that you wanna make. So we also offer these pillows and you can make them in a standard pillow sham size of 20 by 26. You could do a 20 by 20, 22 by 22, obviously any size that you prefer. So I'm gonna go three and a half inches over on either side of the stripe to make this 19 inches wide and cut two. Now just to be sure that the stripes are centered, I'm going to fold this in half and confirm that they line up and that these are equal and then I can cut all the way up 19 inches. I'm just using my piece of grain sack that's 19 by 19 inches as a template. Now I'll just cut two 18 inch pieces of this bias tape These are for the two ties on the sides. This is gonna be an envelope style case for the ticking. We're gonna start with the ticking. To finish this raw edge, you're gonna fold it over once, press it down, and then fold it over again to hide the raw edge inside, and then sew along the long edge on both back pieces. So you're gonna lay your pillow front out with the stripes horizontal, and then you're gonna lay your pieces that are 13 inches by 19 inches that are now hemmed right sides together, 
on top of that overlapping them so that the middles are crossed like this and the parts that are sewn to the back are facing up like that. There should be about a four inch overlap for a envelope style pillowcase. And so depending on what size you wanna make, you wanna keep that in mind, just make sure it overlaps about four inches after you've done your half inch seam which you have to fold it in twice, so you need to account for an extra inch on either piece to make sure they overlap about four inches. So normally, if you're gonna sew a pillow, you would just start sewing down the sides, but if I do that, well there, I got pretty lucky. The sides would have actually been lined up, but I'm gonna pay really close attention to make sure my ticking stripes at line up all the way down while I'm sewing. So I like to just work this through my machine little by little and check that they're still lining up as I go. You may want to throw some pins in, whatever works best for you to accomplish that goal. Go ahead and do that. But you will see me checking every so often to see that my stripes are still lined up. And I'm gonna do about a half inch seam down the sides. I've sewn down these back pieces and being sure and careful to line up the side stripes here. Now next, you want to make sure to finish this with either a zigzag stitch or if you have a serger. I have a serger, so I'm gonna use that, but you can just use a tight zigzag stitch to finish these raw edges so they don't end up fraying away inside your pillow. And the next step after I finish those edges is going to be to sew along the top and the bottom. Now that these are overlapped with right sides together and pinned, we're gonna sew along here with a half inch seam and here with a half inch seam. I sewed the top and the bottom and then I surged it, which like I said, you could use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger and this is done. So this is gonna go on the pillow first and then it's gonna slip inside the grain sack cover, which I'm gonna show you how to make now. Okay, so this particular grain sack doesn't have a right and a wrong side. It's the exact same on both. So you're just gonna put one piece on top of the other. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be left open on one side because it's gonna have the ties and the little peekaboo ticking stripe on the side that's left open. I'm lining up the stripes on these four points. You'll notice here, they're lined up nicely. And that's the only thing you need to be concerned with when you're sewing this, is that these line up on all four spots. So you may wanna throw a pin in there to be sure they line up. And now I'm gonna sew the top, the bottom, and one side, leaving one side open. And then I'll show you what to do with that. So I'm gonna sew around three sides and then serge or zigzag stitch. And then I'll show you the next step where we're gonna add in the ties. I've sewn around the three sides and serged. And now I'm just gonna turn it right side out. And you'll see that the stripes line up in all four spots. Now we have to do something with this. So if you have a serger, you can just serge all the way around and then just fold it in once since the raw edges will be taken care of. If you do not, I would recommend, like we did with the back of the ticking pillow, folding it in twice to hide the raw edges inside. I'm gonna serge since I have a serger, then I'm gonna fold it over about a half inch and I'm going to find the places where we put in the bias tape before I sew all the way around. See, I've serged all the way around so that the raw edges are hidden. If you do not have a serger, just go ahead and do it twice 
and you'll hide the raw edges that way. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the bias tape. Earlier we cut these two 18 inch pieces of bias tape and now we have to finish them off to make them tie. So the way I do that is I fold this top edge in and then I just fold it back over like it was and I'm gonna sew here and then all the way down. I'm gonna do that for both ties. So now these are ready to go into the grain sack pillow and I'm gonna show you how we find the middle point and put them in. Here we have this pillow and the open edge right here. Now I'm just gonna fold this in half and that is how I'm gonna find the center. The center's right here. So I'm gonna take the end that we didn't finish because remember we tucked in one edge but we didn't finish this edge so we're gonna put that inside here where the middle is, like that. And I'm just gonna put a little pin there to keep it in place. And then I'm gonna find the exact same point on the other side and do the same thing, tucking in the edge that we didn't finish. So I just kinda pull it real tight there and make sure that they're gonna line up just so. And I can even check this, I can you know hold the pillow up and see that they do line up, and they do. So now, I'm gonna fold it over about a half inch and sew all the way around, and then these will already be caught, these ties will already be caught in while I'm doing that. Ties are obviously facing toward the inside of the pillow. I like to bring them over like this to make them stay outward so that they can be tied in a bow. And so I just like to put a little stitch right here on both sides, both ties, to make that happen. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now you can see that the ties lay outward so that they're ready to be tied into a bow onto the pillow. So let me show you how we put this on. There you have it, that's the whole tutorial on how to make these grain sack and ticking stripe pillows. I will link all the sources below so you could get this exact fabric. I like to use the Ikea pillow inserts that are 20 inches wide for the 18 inch pillows. I like that they look a little bit fuller when you use a larger pillow than one that's just a little bit too small that doesn't fill it out well. So I'll link those as well. Obviously you can use any pillow insert that fits. You might have some around your house already. These look really nice in a pair, on a bed or couch. I like to keep a set on each wingback chair, so one per wingback chair. And I think that looks really nice. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I make two videos every week on our handmade home, food from scratch, and our simple lifestyle here on Boone Street. Visit my blog where you can get a free ebook on simple ways to add farmhouse style to any home. You can do that by visiting farmhouseonboon.com. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.